Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's Hawk Talk. Um, my name is Kristen Kipke. I'm the Associate Director of Alumni Engagement here at IIT. And today we have Lester McCarroll joining us. Um, he's an alum um, and he will be speaking about community engagement and uh, driving economic change. Um, if you have any questions for Lester, uh, you can either unmute yourself and go ahead and ask them, or if you wanna use the chat box on your Zoom um, interface, you can chat it to us and we will answer those at the end of the presentation. Um, I will uh, share the presentation right now with everyone and I will turn it over to Lester. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are. My name is Lester McCarroll, Jr. I'm an um, electrical engineering uh, grad of uh, class of 1983 of Illinois Institute of Technology. Uh, I start off this talk uh, by trying to establish a mood, try to establish a mindset. Um, you see one of my favorite quotes on this slide, do not go where the path may lead, go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Uh, typically, uh, people follow the crowd. We look at other companies, we look at other organizations, and we basically look at those practices and we work to do the same type of thing uh, that they've done. Uh, in, some in some cases, that's good. Uh, in some cases, that's just following the crowd. And so uh, I, I wanna establish a mindset of innovation as we talk about community engagement and building economic engines, uh, leveraging community engagement. So let's figure out a way to innovate, build new paths, and leave a trail so that others can find where you've gone and others can follow and execute the best practices that you established. Okay, so the name of the talk is Leveraging Community Engagement to Build Economic Engines. We're gonna talk about, uh, first of all, I'm gonna uh, tell you a little bit about myself to establish the context and where some of my opinions come from. We're gonna talk about an evolving paradigm of community engagement. I'm gonna share with you the view of the ecosystem uh, that I want you to think about as you, as you uh, try some things uh, around this space all of the players that go into the economic engine that you're going to produce. Talk about some goals uh, of uh, community engagement. But let's talk about some of the tactics and I'll spend a fair amount of time uh, describing uh, four categories of tactics and give you a couple of examples of each. And then I'm gonna issue a, you a challenge. Um, I think that, uh, you know, rather than just laying out some of my ideas and opinions, I'd, I'd issue you a challenge and, and I'd hope that you will try some things and follow up with me uh, as, as we move forward, okay? So with that in mind, uh, I've been around for a while. As I mentioned, uh, I've got my bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from here uh, at IIT uh, back in 1983. Uh, went on to Stanford University and got my master's in, in EE. I came back, spent 10 years at AT&T Bell Laboratories on the technology side, did just about anything that you can think of on the technology side. And then uh, 1994, I was recruited to uh, go over to Motorola where I switched to the business side and uh, did just about anything you could do on the business side. Uh, I left uh, Motorola as the vice president of uh, global relations uh, in, the, in their strategy and operations role. I left there in 2003 and formed the McCarroll Group. And over the past, um, past 16 years, I've worked with about 100 uh, different startups in a wide variety of industries, creating new business models, uh, creating financial models, developing products and feature sets and organization designs and a wide variety of things to help these companies translate their concepts and ideas 
to momentum and revenue and structure. Uh, you will see on this slide a, a number of the organizations I've, I've worked with in developing entrepreneurship programming uh, and some of the more significant organizations. But today, uh, I focus on in four, four areas, and these are clients and, and projects. This is how I spend my time and uh, generate revenue. Uh, the first is GP Ventures. It's a mer mergers and acquisition advisory firm. Uh, simply put, we buy and sell technology companies. Um, McCarroll Group is, is my umbrella, but it's also where I focus my strategic planning practice. I do business consulting as well. Uh, a broad uh, set of management consulting uh, services that I offer uh, to uh, institutions like IIT, University of Chicago, Chicago State, as well as for-profit businesses uh, like TC Health uh, Clinic Systems um, and, a, and a wide variety of other, uh, other uh, small and mid-sized businesses. Uh, Data Defenders is a cybersecurity service firm. I do strategy and, and uh, uh, strategy and business development. For Data Defenders, the owner and founder of Data Defenders is also an IIT alum. Uh, and then finally, uh, where I get to experiment with some of the things that uh, we'll talk about today is an economic development organization called MS Bark. That's the Mid-South Business Association and Resource Center that is based here in uh, Bronzeville. Bronzeville is where IIT is. This picture that you see here is, uh, is, a, is actually around 26th and King Drive. And if you recall uh, the area, uh, you might remember this intersection, but um, I want you to consider the things that I'm gonna describe in terms of a community engagement. I wanna pick you to picture yourself, not only in the communities that you work and play and, and uh, reside right now, but also think about the, the neighborhood that uh, IIT is based in and view community engagement from that standpoint as well. So I want to establish an evolving paradigm. In the past, companies and organizations viewed community engagement from a transactional standpoint, from a charitable standpoint. And you would uh, hear folks talk about philanthropy and establish foundations so that they can give to area uh, residents and, corporate citizenships, that they would do things that just, would just, they thought that were necessary to be a good corporate citizen. And then they would have, uh, uh, some companies have opportunities for their employees and uh, their staff or constituents, and, and in IIT's case, their students, for volunteerism, where they would uh, spend some of their time giving back to area community service organizations and, and things of that nature. So though, that was more from a charitable standpoint and uh, corporations have viewed that charitable uh, uh, approach from a transactional uh, standpoint. What I want you to think about is community engagement from a growth standpoint. It's really a strategic and long-term mindset. And what we're talking about is leveraging community engagement to help you develop talent and acquire talent. And when I say talent, I mean future employees as well as uh, area businesses who might supply or partner with your company. Um, community engagement to help create an attractive workplace where you have amenities um, that, um, that are nearby where people can go eat and play and it makes, makes your company or your organization or your school an attractive place to be and a safe place to be. Uh, all of those things have financial consequences. Uh, community engagement as a, mean, a means for acquiring customers, whether those customers are businesses or whether those are consumers. And then finally, community engagement as a, as a means towards innovation and, and piloting some of the, the research and R&D and new concepts, new products, new services that you want to try out. So those are, those are a few things that, where I want you to, to begin to think about a, a different par paradigm, a different strategic long-term way of viewing community engagement that's quite different than the charitable mindset we adopted or companies adopted with community engagement in the past. So I, uh, what's worthwhile is, is, is understanding the economic ecosystem of a community. 
uh, you will see a number of entities here. The ecosystem is all of the different entities that produce economic results. In this case, in any given neighborhood, you have startups and small businesses. Those might be pre revenue business, early stage businesses, existing brick and mortar, home-based businesses, or nomadic businesses like real estate brokers, sales folks, insurance agents that don't have a particular office, but they, you might find them in coffee shops or in a wide variety of places, but they're on the move. But these are your startups and small businesses. They're a critical entity in any, in any community. Then there are service providers. These are the folks who serve those small businesses. Some of those are for-profits and some of those are non-for-profits. You have small business development centers that are funded by the federal government. You have uh, other uh, types of organizations that are set up to uh, serve and, and boost the fortunes of small businesses. You have educational institutions, whether they're professional uh, education organizations or colleges and universities, or trade schools and K through 12. Edu all education uh, uh, institutions are preparing the talent pipeline for the future, as well as educating the, the folks who work for you today. Uh, you have incubators. These incubators are the ones that help sprout and grow uh, small businesses and startups. Some of these incubators are formal incubators like 1871, or Blue 1647, there's a wide variety of incubators, uh, also accelerators. And then there's a variety of coffee houses. If you go to any given Starbucks or Sip and Saver or any given coffee house, you're gonna find a wide variety of different um, entrepreneurs trying to launch new businesses. And uh, those are important, that's an important uh, segment of the ecosystem. You have the talent pipeline, white collar workers, blue collar workers, as well as students that are very important to cultivate. That is a very important part of the economic ecosystem. That's where your workforce is going to come from. Uh, your large businesses, be they employers or development anchors. Development anchors are those institutions that are hiring significant enough people in the area uh, to, to transform the economic fortunes of that area. Think University of Chicago in the Hyde Park area on the south side. Think IIT in the Brownsville area. These are two significant uh, development anchors around which businesses, and, you know, whether retailers or restaurants, uh, dry cleaners, banks, they will uh, develop around these development anchors in a way that serves the employees and staff of uh, those uh, anchor institutions. You have suppliers as well as um, uh, some of these large businesses supply. So these large businesses that hire, whether they're uh, 50 employees, 100 employees, 200 employees, those large businesses are uh, essential for the economy of a, of a community. And the absence of those large businesses is a, a significant drag on any area's economy. And there's a lot of examples of that in Chicago that you'll see. The public sector is a significant player in this ecosystem. Uh, these are uh, your public officials and, and government agencies that control programs and incentives and regulations and grants and, and uh, zoning, all of those types of things that uh, you will need to determine, um, you know, the taxes that you pay, the rules and laws and that your business has to follow, uh, whether there's regulation over pricing or restricting sale of certain things or restricting the type of business that you have. The public sector controls much of that. Uh, the public sector will have these grants that uh, will make it easier for certain types of businesses to establish themselves in a certain area. So public sector plays a very important role in any economic engine, and we have to take that into account when we talk about community engagement. Your customer base, whether they be businesses or consumers, they're an important part of the ecosystem there. These are the folks money, and the lack of consumers to spend money or the lack of businesses to spend money uh, and the fortunes of each of those different sub-segments uh, is a determining factor for uh, how uh, uh, good of an economy uh, there will be in any given community. And then finally, funding sources, uh, banks and private investors, venture capitalists, private equity firms, as well as friends and family. Funding sources fuel uh, the, the uh, startup, fuel uh, the, um, the health of the economic ecosystem, and you, and you can't have a, a healthy economic engine without those. So when we talk about community engagement, I want you to think beyond the giving back to the poor residents of the area. 
uh, I want you to think about community engagement as engaging in every element of this ecosystem, every dimension of this ecosystem. Okay. So uh, the goals around uh, community engagement, it's, it's really a cyclical relationship. You want to engage in your community so that your economic growth helps to fuel the community's economic growth. And it really, and, and, and that can sometimes happen naturally, but the mindset I want you to establish and the things that I'm gonna recommend that you try require that you want your economic fortunes to fuel the growth of the community. And I want you to recognize that as the community's uh, economic growth takes place, you want that to fuel your growth. So there's a cyclical relationship. And if you're intentional about this, then you'll have a much more effective economic engine. Uh, and another way to say that, if you're not intentional about it, you're leaving some money on the table. So uh, think about uh, each of those pieces in the following, uh, in the following way. Uh, economic growth of your company, your organization, your educational institution. Uh, think about your talent acquisition costs. What could you do if you could lower those? What, if you could, what could you do if you were able to retain employees? Um, what could you do if you could create new income streams a lot faster than you do today? What could you do if you, your brand was viewed favorably by all of those different ent entities in, the, in that ecosystem such that they preferred to do business with you? What could, what could you do if it was easier for you to re retain customers and retain employees by having area amenities that uh, everybody enjoyed? You have restaurants and cleaners and places to shop that people look forward to going to work because they can get a lot done. They, they can go, uh, go and see a movie after work and, and experience a quality of life that makes this a great, uh, your organization or your company a great place to work. Think about the ability uh, to retain employees and customers if people thought your area was safe. Because the way you've gained, you've engaged the community, you've got relationships with the, the you know, low income people and the high income people. You know, Rudyard Kipling in his poem, If, talked about uh, the ability to walk with kings but not lose the common touch. And when you think about that from a business standpoint, there are a lot of benefits to that. And think about area housing, engaging in the community in a way that uh, makes area housing much more attractive and how that can lead to you, your ability to retain customers and retain employees. And then finally, uh, the other example I'll use, there's a, there's a ton more of these, is your ability to cultivate suppliers. Uh, suppliers who are well tuned to the things that you need because of the way you decided to engage the community and the way that you've decided to contribute to the growth of those suppliers. So those are some community engagement type, uh, uh, um, specific costs and benefits uh, from a financial standpoint that you ought to think about. And there are a ton more than these, but I just wanted to stimulate your thinking on this. On the community side, what you're talking about is engaging in a community uh, in a way that's gonna increase the number of jobs and increase the wages in that area. That's gonna uh, increase the employment rate. That's gonna build the revenue totals and the revenue growth of the area uh, area businesses. That's gonna uh, diversify the number of businesses by industry. That are gonna build wealth. Uh, that are gonna increase area deposits and banks. And it's same, same token that there are the improvement of area amenities and the quality of life are a significant part of that economic growth. So as, as we think about the tactics of community engagement in the categories of those tactics that I'm going to suggest and that you might think about as you innovate on this, on the, in this space, think about this collection of things on both sides of, of your economic growth of your organization and company and the economic growth of the community in which you reside. So here, here's some categories of tactics. I've listed four uh, tactics here. There's sponsorships, internships and programs, pilots, uh, using the community as a laboratory, and events. Uh, we'll just talk about each, each one of these. Now, there, there are other areas of, um, of community engagement that you're gonna develop that, that may not even exist. Uh, and by the way, 
Uh, these categories of community engagement aren't necessarily new. But what I'm going to suggest is that uh, we focus our community engagement to build economic engine by being much more intentional about the outcomes of what we're doing here. We're not just doing these things in order to be charitable. We're doing these things with the expectation that there, there's going to be a payoff. And not with the expectation, that expectation not meaning that we sit back and wait for those positive results, but we design these uh, we design this, these ways of engaging with the community, and we're partnering with various parts of the ecosystem such that we increase the possibility of getting the kind of financial results and economic results uh, we want as a result of doing these things. Sponsorships, you are engaging customers, suppliers, area businesses, and neighbors. It could be go from uh, as simple as sponsoring a, a little league team. It could be being a sponsor of a, a of a local uh, economic development program. For example, there's a women's business development uh, corporation here uh, in the area. There's also my organization, MS Bark. Uh, we do a lot of programming for small businesses and people who are aspiring entrepreneurs. You know, your company could be a sponsor of one of those. And, and to the extent you, do, you establish that type of relationship, uh, your, uh, your business benefits. We, MS Bark, we have a partnership uh, with Yelp. Most of you are probably familiar with Yelp. Uh, and uh, what, we, what we found is that Yelp had some new categories and services that businesses weren't really taking advantage, advantage with. So they've sponsored some of our programs and linked up with some of the businesses that we serve. And as a result, some of those businesses are using these uh, underused services. They're beginning to buy some of the uh, Yelp uh, services in a way that they might not have had Yelp not uh, been a sponsor so they were very intentional and as a as a community partner we were very intentional in cultivating a way and designing a way for them to engage with us uh, that would yield those benefits and address their specific business issues and the other thing sponsorships will help you do is sponsoring various programs that, uh, help you meet people you know you can think of it as friend raisers as you meet the various people from the, that ecosystem some of these folks will be tastemakers there will be influencers who help people determine who they're doing business with, who they're spending money with. And so I want you to think about the things that you decide to sponsor or seek sponsorships that are gonna help you cultivate these types of relationships. Uh, internships and programs are really aimed at building loyal and prepared talent and supplier pipelines. Um, again, in the past, Many companies uh, had internship programs uh, so that they could check a box. And at their board meeting or when they talk to their alumni and say, wow, look at this great program we had. And not necessarily any follow up with students. Uh, you know, they accept students from anywhere, which, which is okay for those students. But if you're a lot more intentional about your internships, you can have a a significant impact on the community you reside in helping them build their economic engine. Uh, these internships make a difference in people's lives. I was part of a, a summer program that Bell Laboratories offered uh, back in the late 70s and early 80s that transformed my life. Uh, the scholarships they gave me, the work opportunities they gave me uh, were very critical to the foundation of my career. Right now, there are young men and, and young women uh, in junior high school and in high school who could be uh, the next uh, manager or next set of supervisors, who could, who could be the next innovator in your company. Uh, they could be one of the, they could be one of the, um, one of the founding members of a startup that you make. I mean, you, you think about a company like CleverSafe. CleverSafe was built here at IIT. Clever Safe was sold to uh, IBM about a couple of years ago, I think for like $1.3, $1.4 billion. Think about all of those employees who got stock options when they joined it as a founding member. And think about the significant transformation of life if some of those people who were part of Clever Safe had been from the local community. And so when you think about internships, and you think about programs and you think about 
the businesses that you're building in, in whether it's in your company or the school that you're at, think about how can I engage some of the talent in this area so that they can benefit from the success of this brand new innovation. Those are the things that transform communities and those are the things that will help to continue to, to uh, build your, your company. Those kind of success stories are gonna help fuel your economic growth. Uh, the next category is pilots, using the community as a lab. And this is where you, you've got R&D, you've got research, you've got new products, new services, and you wanna pilot them with the people in your area. You wanna give them the first taste of it. You wanna give the businesses the first taste of it. You wanna help them answer some of the questions because they're close, they can, you know, many of times they can walk to your company or you can, it's easy for you to reach out to them. And it makes them feel a part of you and your success and the excitement around this new innovation that they're first. Those folks in your community are really benefit from that, but you're also creating some early adopters for your offerings. Uh, IIT actually does some of this. There's a company called Franklin Energy that's working with a number of energy companies that, and, and Franklin Energy partnered with the, the uh, Stewart School of Business here at IIT to outreach to uh, area residents and area businesses to determine ways that they could uh, leverage um, tactics for saving energy. Some new te technology and, and the innovations and practices for saving energy. And so they, they did some research studies involving some area businesses and residents, got some really valuable information from that that, that uh, is being taken and, and there's some innovation around that. Uh, it could be that you develop, uh, uh, one of the programs I uh, developed was uh, imagine a Microsoft who develops the next generation Xbox and imagine them engaging uh, area teenagers who love playing video games. Imagine them uh, help uh, engaging them to help them uh, play these new games, uh, to help them determine, you know, what, what works well, what doesn't, uh, whether it's the size of the, the joystick, uh, you know, whether it's the, uh, the images and visuals or whether it's the levels in the game, all of those types of things. And what you're doing by piloting these things is that you're not only giving these uh, area residents insights ins to how you are innovating and the new stuff that's coming out they'll get excited about, but you can also stimulate interest in perhaps joining your team one day and perhaps being an intern with you one day and perhaps building a game system of their own. Okay. So these pilots contribute to that cycle of economic growth that I talked about earlier. And then one of the earliest pieces, uh, the, the easiest pieces is the events. Uh, and this, the events can help you build, broker, and extend relationships with the players in your ecosystem. Uh, you know, you can have events to launch new products and programs. You can have events around art and culture. You can have events that, uh, that may have nothing to do with your school other than getting people to come to your campus uh, and, 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 and feeling that your institution, your organization, your company is a part of their neighborhood. And, that, um, and as a result, you're building those relationships so that the guy that's walking down the street who sees the student that's walking down the street, there's a kinship there because there's a relationship and they, you know, they they don't view IIT as a strange place. Or they don't view your company as a strange place. These are very, being very intentional about the kind of events that you develop and your company puts on or your organization puts on can, can really help you establish a, a relationship uh, that can contribute to your, your economic growth. So see, these are some of the, the tactics that, that uh, you can use. So I, I want to issue a, a challenge uh, to each of you, and then you know, I'll, I'll take some questions. Uh, I want you to try something new uh, that, that helps transform the way your current organization or your current company transforms how you engage the community in a way that's going to give you some economic benefit. It's really an area that's ripe for innovation. You know, we built, uh, we design new phones, we design new software, we innovate on uh, creating uh, driverless cars, uh, you know, working on sending people to Mars. We can innovate around this space too. How do we use community engagement to build and, and further build the economic engine? Uh, and I'd like you to report back. Uh, report back to me and I'll, I'll give you my contact information or you can 
send it back to uh, IIT. Uh, but uh, let's share our approaches and, and results and let's share what works, uh, what doesn't work and, and what's no longer viable. And then uh, Illinois Tech is, is well positioned to engage the faculty, the students, the alum, and the network of all of those three, their network to lead in this area and, and teach others. Uh, I'm, I'm vice chair of the African American Alumni Association. Uh, and uh, having uh, discussions with uh, a number of the board of trustees in terms of how can we innovate to do exactly that. And uh, we hope to have some great things to report over the next six months or so. So we're taking the challenge ourselves, but I'd like you to, I'd like you to try some things and being more intentional about how your organization engages the community uh, and um, in a way that's gonna lead to your economic success and the economic success in the community and how those two are feeding each other. Uh, my website is themacarogroup.com, so you can um, uh, kind of get a sense of what I do there. You can reach me there. I'm at Twitter at the Macaro Group, and uh, on, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn as well. I look forward to uh, connecting with a number of you and uh, perhaps not only keeping in touch with what you're doing and trying in terms of this topic, but also things you're trying to do in general. I appreciate your attention and um, I am uh, welcome any questions that you might have. So uh, Lester, we have a question here. Um, what resources would you recommend for finding a job in community development? So resources uh, in finding a job in community development. So, so think about all of the different entities that actively do community development. So you're thinking about schools. Uh, most schools have uh, community engagement or community relation uh, types of uh, uh, organizations. Uh, you're talking about Large, some larger companies, you know, a large company like IBM, large company like Motorola, where I used to be, uh, they all have com community organizations. Uh, the uh, Small Business Administration funds small business development co uh, co uh, corporations uh, around the country. And so if you look for, if you look up SBDC, SBDC as a small business development corporation, you will find undoubtedly find SBDCs in your area and, and those uh, will provide opportunities for uh, employment in this space. And then there are organizations like, like my own, uh, uh, like the Mid-South Business Association Resource Center. Uh, there are chambers of commerce. You can find area chambers, chambers of commerce. Some of them are neighborhood based. Some of them are city based or county based. And then most most government agent, most government entities, uh, whether it's the city of Chicago, whether it's the county of Cook, they all have community development organizations there. So those are resources uh, and, and a number of Google searches on chambers, uh, those government agencies, uh, schools or some of the larger employees in your area will help you find those types of organizations and allow you to begin to network to determine what the opportunities are there for you to uh, join those teams and, and add value. Great, thank you so much. Um, it looks like that was all of our questions. Um, if anyone has any final questions, if you want to um, either unmute yourself and go ahead and ask them, or if you wanna chat them in. Um, otherwise, thank you again, Lester. We've really enjoyed this and uh, this, Hawk Talk will also be available um, on YouTube uh, the week of, starting the week of October 1st. And our next live Hawk Talk recording will be on November 8th. And that will be our final Hawk Talk for 2019. So thank you all so much for joining us.